Hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name's Hashem and you're watching another Pushing Film live stream. And thanks for joining if you are live. If you're not, I appreciate you watching this video back anyway. And I recently came back to Melbourne from a little trip in Perth. If you followed the channel, you know that I recently went interstate for a little while. Things have been really busy with moving house and I had this trip back to my hometown of Perth. And I recently came back into what is now another Melbourne lockdown. So I managed to skip a little bit of it because I was already interstate in Perth. And uh, it was great to have that freedom over there. And unfortunate knowing that Melbourne was going into another lockdown and that uh, Sarah and I would be coming back into that. And even though they said it was seven days, it looks like it could be longer. It's most likely going to be extended and it could be two weeks more, who knows. But you know, we've dealt with this before and uh, we'll get through it. So actually, is anyone else watching from Melbourne? So, you know, are you in Melbourne or are you in lockdown somewhere else? You know, uh, put your hand up or leave a comment or like the video uh, and I'll, I'll know. Um, but I'm just going to check the, the chat. I've got Stephen Pam. What's up, Hashim? It's always exciting to get mail. Yes, so today's a bit of a mail day video. It's a bit of a unboxing as well. So I got, uh, as you can see from the thumbnail, a couple of deliveries. And today's live stream is going to be going over uh, me opening uh, a few packages that I received after getting back home. So I came back home to find a few packages, one of which is a Yashica Flex TLR that if you watch the channel, you know that I ordered this camera a long time ago. It was back in July or August last year, if I'm guessing correctly. And I talked about it a little bit in a live stream and mentioned that because of the lockdown and the international restriction or embargo with shipping, uh, it came from Japan, but I couldn't have it shipped because Japan stopped sending mail due to the uh, state of emergency and Japan Post being the selected postage method, method wasn't sending it to Australia. It was a whole mess. It was a whole big thing, but it basically meant that I was waiting a while to see if they would lift that restriction with Japan Post. Alternatively, I could have paid heaps more for uh, FedEx or something which wouldn't have been worth it because the camera cost me about $90. So I decided to wait and wait and wait. And then there was still no lifting of the restriction. So I eventually said to the seller, let's just go with surface mail because we initially were afraid that that would take th up to three months. And, uh, and it did, but I came back and today I received that delivery. So yeah, thanks again for joining everyone. Let me know how you're doing. Um, and I hope anyone in Melbourne is coping well with lockdown uh, or elsewhere for that matter. Stevens in Melbourne, cool. Melissa Finley in the comments. Hope you're having an okay lockdown. Yeah, so it's my first day of lockdown so far and uh, I am not anticipating that they will end it soon, unfortunately, but we'll see. So yeah, let me know how, how you're all doing, what you've been up to. Uh, I'm glad to be back in Melbourne in a sense and to get back on top of some uh, things like making these videos. But let's get into the first thing that I wanted to talk about. So um, before I do that, you can see I've got a couple of the things here. That's the, the package I mentioned that I'm going to unbox. But uh, if you're here mainly for that, you might want to wait a little bit if you're happy to stick around with this live stream. If you're watching this post stream, you can skip ahead towards the end of the video as when I'll be unboxing this Yashica Flex TLR. But before that, I just wanted to share a few things and update a little bit about um, what's been going on. And anyone who watches the live stream regularly knows that I've been uh, reviewing this camera. I've been playing with this Fuji X-Pro3 and especially shooting it side by side with my Leica MA or other film cameras to compare it to the 35mm film shooting experience. Now this X-Pro was provided to me kindly by Fuji Film Australia and uh, they've been nothing but extremely helpful and um, supportive of the idea and not only did they provide me with the camera to borrow for a few weeks, um, but they gave me the, the two lenses you see here being an 18mm and a 23mm f2, which was what I selected to try because they compare well with the focal lengths I have on the Leica. And also they let me borrow this Fujifilm uh, M-mount adapter so I can use my Leica lenses because what I want to do is shoot this like I would my film camera, especially when it came to street whereby I will use, uh, you know, manual focus using zone focusing with my Leica lenses and shoot it uh, with Sunny 16 even using the optical viewfinder to give me as close of an experience to shooting the Leica on the streets, which I have done a little bit of so far. So that's been going well. 
I did take the camera with me to Perth and I'm glad I did because I got a lot more time with it over there that now that I've come back into lockdown, I may not get, obviously. I can't go out shooting street anymore, but I did get some time with this camera on the streets here in Melbourne before leaving and in Perth uh, during a rally or protest that I was shooting over there. So just again, in the comments, lockdown, sigh, hope we're all well considering it. Agreed. Not looking good for Thursday for the announcement. So Thursday is when the seven days was initially going to end. But yeah, judging by the amount of cases, that probably won't happen, unfortunately, as sad as that is. Now, let's quickly look. I want to give you a bit of a preview of some of the expo images I've gotten. So just heading into this view, I'll get Lightroom happening. Okay. Not sure if Lightroom's showing up here. Let me try and fix that for you guys, sorry. Okay, so you should be seeing Lightroom now. I've just got a few selections here from uh, images I've made on the X-Pro so far and to run you through what I'm looking to do for this future video. And I'm open to your suggestions as well. This first image is just an indoor shot taken on the X-Pro with a manual focus lens. And I also shot the same image side by side with the Leica on Fuji Superior 400. The film profile for the digital shot was the uh, Fuji Classic Neg, I believe, which is meant to be like Fuji Superior 400. So what I wanna do in this video is sort of compare some of these uh, film emu emulations or simulations, whatever you want to call them, to the actual film that they closely resemble or attempt to emulate. So when I get a chance to send my film off, I will uh, compare it and I'll show it in the video side by side. So not only am I testing the camera and the experience, but I'm looking at some of the film simulations as well. And this one uh, I'm already quite really um, impressed with. All these images, mind you, are straight out of camera JPEG. So I chose to shoot the Fuji in that style, straight out of camera JPEG, so that you would get the purest sort of result without any uh, editing or alteration to what you would expect if you were to shoot an X-Pro3 and let's say you're a film shooter and you want to sort of know what it looks like compared to the actual film uh, that you might shoot. So um, yeah, that's what I thought would work well. Let me know if you think any differently but that's how we're handling that so far. And again, another shot on the street here. This one I think was the, the normal profile or Provia, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, I'll check through all those later on when I finally do that video. Uh, another shot on the street here. So this one is from Perth during that rally. And um, during this rally, I was actually shooting the Leica and the X-Pro. I had um, both around my neck and I was alternating between the, the film and the digital. And I shot some Tri-X and some uh, more Fuji Superior 400, some Portra 400, um, maybe even 400H. So I have a lot of film to compare to a lot of the profiles. And I tried to switch between different uh, digital profiles so that when I finally make this video, I have a lot of material to compare the, the both with. But already I'm quite impressed. Like these are straight out of camera JPEGs. This was, I believe the the 400H style emulation, which is called ProNeg or ProNeg Plus. This was the higher contrast version of that. And uh, yeah, they um, someone in the comments, Stephen saying they look quite filmic here in the stream at least, which I, I agree with. They do have that look already, that bit of extra punch, but good skin tones of 400H. And um, same with this shot here. And the camera itself, I can already say was quite fun to use. Obviously it took a bit of a, an adjustment period and I still was a bit quicker with the Leica and zone focusing, but um, yeah, I'm impressed with the output of the X-Pro3 so far, just um, again in Perth at a friend's soccer match or football. Another shot here of Sarah at the fuel station on our last day yesterday, and uh, one shot just taken here this morning on um, during sunrise. So yeah, that's just to give you a bit of an idea of what to expect from that Fuji X-Pro3 video and comparison. So let me know what you think, if you have any suggestions on how to approach that. All right, let's just switch back to this view. So the next thing I wanted to talk about in relation to that is uh, because when I came back to Melbourne, um, I, I found half of this delivery. I hadn't gotten the 23 mil lens yet, which uh, came in the mail. I picked it up when I got back. And uh, what Fujifilm had also done, which is really uh, kind of them, and I was not actually expecting it, they also threw in one of the deliveries 
some of the new Fuji Acros too. So they sent me uh, two 120 rolls and four 35 mil rolls. It was a complete uh, surprise again from the representative that I was speaking with at Fujifilm. And um, I emailed him and he said, yep, we uh, threw those in in case you want to do any content or comparisons. And I will therefore include a comparison to the Acros 2 profile on the X-Pro um, with the actual Acros film because I have run out of 35 mil Acros original. So this came in perfect timing for that. And uh, yeah, thanks heaps to Fujifilm and I'll maybe even do a separate video on Acros 2. Let me know what you think. If you think I should do a separate video reviewing Acros 2 or comparing it to the digital emulation or, or do both, include it in the uh, X-Pro3 video and do a separate video comparing the emulation. So because they sent me all these roles, I have the capacity there to do something more with that and um, that would be quite fun. All right, the next thing going through the mail is um, I've got a print here. So little package. Um, this is for the print exchange that I did with the other YouTube uh, producers that you might have seen in a previous video where I talked about printing a 120 film scan, how I uh, made a print to send to Nico from Nico's Photography Show. And this was the one I received from uh, Borut from um, Top Shit Photography. So I'm excited to open that, but I'm going to do that in a separate video um, probably in the next week or two because that is meant to be early June. So I'm going to do a, a video where I open that print, show it, and talk a little bit about that exchange. Um, another package is something from Essential Film Holder. This is some updated uh, and new stuff, but I can't actually share what's in that yet. So um, in case you're interested in developments in the film holder sort of stuff, uh, stay subscribed or come back to the channel so you can see what I've got uh, you know, in store for that. By the way, if anyone watched that Central Film Holder versus Veloy comparison, I got a lot of good feedback and I'm thankful for all that, but I also realized in hindsight after um, Harold from Veloy reached out to me that there was a little bit of a mistake I made in that um, they don't actually recommend scanning emulsion side up as much as I generally uh, prefer to do that. I think the design of the mask was, and he mentioned that it was in the manual, although I admit I didn't completely read the manual and I did go back and check once he updated me, but I actually couldn't see anything about it. But generally speaking, he doesn't recommend scanning with the emulsion side up. So I probably should have mentioned that in the video, even though that is still how I prefer to scan. Uh, I probably should have um, checked that and a couple of other items that he, he corrected me on. But what I'll do is probably uh, correct any of those you know, oversights that I made in any future Veloy content. Because again, this was just a beta uh, product and I mentioned that I made it very clear. So um, yeah, I, I may have made a couple of oversights in terms of the Veloy regarding, you know, changing those rubber rings whereby apparently they've been improved because that was one of my complaints that they were very hard to move. And again, I said, I have big hands and my fingers were scratching up on the metal. You probably won't have that issue, especially if you get the final version, because they did make those rubber rings easier to move. I wasn't aware of that, but I was made aware of that. So if you have, um, you know, pre-ordered of Alloy, keep in mind that all that stuff I mentioned was uh, related mainly to the beta product. So you shouldn't have that issue. And um, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear and I'll correct myself in any future content regarding that. All right, next, Lomo. I haven't done Lomo stuff for a while, but they sent me this instant camera. I actually reached out to them because we hadn't done anything together for a while. And uh, I said, you know, I'm interested in doing more stuff. And they said, uh, what about trying this Lomo Instant Square? Because I was interested in doing more instant content. I haven't done anything since the Instax 6, which funny enough, recently stopped working. So perfect timing. Um, they sent me this Instax Square uh, equivalent, which is a Lomo Instant Square glass camera with the glass lens and a couple of accessories for that. So there will be a review on this camera. I'll try and do something interesting. I don't want to approach it like a straight up review. I'd rather do some kind of photo shoot, for example, especially now that we're in lockdown, where I can use this camera and talk about the experience of using it rather than just a technical review. But that should be interesting and I'm looking forward to that um, on the channel. Okay, second Bob. Hello again from Napa Valley. Thanks, Rob. 
I have one of those Veloy holders on the way. Very curious to see how it is. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll like it. Again, anything I mentioned was probably uh, specific to my style of usage and it is a great product and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. All right, let's get to it. I've got to find a, a knife. I'm going to unbox this one. So if you're watching this live, you're going to have to excuse all the noise from the mic that uh, might pick up. Where's my box cut up? Here we go. But if you're not watching this live, feel free to skip ahead a minute because this might be a little bit noisy to open. <laughs> but I'll try and stay a little bit further away from the microphone. All right. If I um, accidentally cut myself live, that wouldn't be very funny, would it? But I'm going to be pretty careful. All right. So in typical uh, fashion, when you get a package from Japan, you'll often find scrunched up Japanese newspapers, which is always, you know, fun to see some of the, the wacky headlines and ads that they have in the newspapers, but I won't bother with that for now. So yeah, as mentioned, um, I ordered this camera way back in, I think August, 2020 or even earlier. And because of all the delays with shipping and the restrictions with shipping from Japan to Australia using Japan Post, I had this on hold for the longest time. Finally decided to just ship it by surface mail, which is, you know, by sea essentially. And that takes up to three months. And it did take about two and a half months. Finally arrived this morning and uh, we're going to unbox it. And the story is, sorry about this noise again, that I uh, ordered this on eBay when I was uh, making my video about cheap medium format options and uh, thought to just browse and see what I could find. I spotted this in pretty rough condition for about 90 Australian dollars, but it was meant to be working uh, except for the low speeds apparently, the low shutter speeds, which generally fix themselves when you kind of use the shutter a little bit and exercise it. And I might try and see if I can give it a basic surface uh, service. And yeah, I've never owned a TLR before. So I thought this would be a good one to start with. It's a Yashica Flex, which I believe outside of Japan is called the Yashica D or something like that. But let's just get this bubble wrap off. Oh wow, it's a bit smaller than I thought it would be. There is a lot of wrapping here. So we're almost there. All right. Nestle Dolce Gusto. No, it's not coffee. I've got Vincent in the chat. Hey man, thanks for joining. Inkfast Studio. Fans of Vince, nice. Yeah, definitely, same here. I've been loving your videos lately, man. But um, here it is. It is a lot smaller than I thought. I've never, again, I've never owned a Yashica or any TLR. And uh, yeah, this one, it doesn't have the crank. I think it has the, the winder. It's, it's packed pretty well. I'm happy with that, especially considering it was sent by Surface Mail. Here we go. That's not a bad little camera. So there it is. So this one has an 80 mil f3.5 lens. It's uh, the Yashikor lens, which I think makes it the earlier version. Uh, as mentioned, it's pretty rough condition. So there's a bit of leatherette peeling here, which I was aware of, but I've looked into getting replacement leatherette kits on Etsy or something like that. And, um, yeah, I might end up replacing that. The back is bare. I'm not sure if there was meant to be a leatherette there. I don't think so. And it's cracking a little bit again on that side. But generally speaking, for about 90 Australian dollars, maybe 100 roughly with shipping, um, this is a pretty good deal. And you can find uh, good TLRs for low prices if you hold out long enough. I had it on my... Uh, eBay alerts or watch lists 
for a while and finally one popped up and um, maybe because of the way it's listed as well I got lucky to some degree so Stephen saying um, I had a seagull TLR back in the day it actually wasn't bad good cheap way to get into medium format yeah and I would really uh, recommend this as a, a good way to get into medium format for anyone else out there Vince Dude, it's going to be a fun cam. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never really liked the square format too much, but it's probably because I haven't really gotten used to it. I've only shot it uh, on a Diana, for example. Lewis, way smaller than my Mamiya C330. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, I've got pretty big hands, so it makes the camera look tiny, but that's all it is. Trying to get it to catch the light there. Nice, I love my TLR, Yashica Mat 124G, yeah. So that's a, a higher spec version of this with a better lens. Interesting that it has the knob in place of the crank. Yeah, I think that's a, a cheaper way of making it. So the advance, oh, well, that's the focusing there. So the advance would be this little knob here, I guess, or, or that one or both. Let's open that up. It looks pretty clear. It looks all right. I mean, it'd be hard for you guys to tell because, yeah, it's not really going to work on camera. But the focusing screen's not bad. So let me know if you think I should do some video on this uh, in the future or maybe just incorporate it into a film review, for example, when I review Acros 2 or do some uh, shoot some of those medium format rolls. I can use this as one of the cameras. So I'm really, um, yeah, looking forward to trying this. Stephen, having said that, I now have a Mamiya Six, which makes a great, which makes great picks, Com convenient to use. Yep, yeah, Mamiya Six would be really nice. Another square format. Vince, square is different; it just takes some getting used to. Yeah, that's what I thought. So this is why I'm going to push myself into it and try and embrace the square format and maybe get better at composing in square, because until now I've found it hard and you know really my one of my weak points. Sometimes not having the vertical space is tough. Yeah, that's what I anticipate. Ink fast, holy, that thing is tiny. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really small. I was actually expecting it to be uh, as big as something like a Rolly Flex maybe, which I have um, played with. But once you close that viewfinder, it's really pretty tiny. Yeah, maybe I should have a big head as well, which, which is true. Um, Spirit World, I'm partial to advancing knobs to cranks any day. Yeah, I guess there's less to go wrong. Steven, it'd be cool to see a short video on that camera. Whack a couple of rolls through and take us along. Yeah, be fun because this is a little bit slept on, I think. Everyone goes for the 124G. Um, this one is, again, called the Yashica Flex in Japan, which I think is equivalent to the Yashica D or Yashica A outside of Japan. So if you change up those search terms when you're looking, you'll find more options because, again, there's a lot of different naming conventions with some of these cameras. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to shoot this. I'm probably going to chuck a roll in it today, I reckon. I'm just going to test all the shutter speeds, make sure it's working, and um, start playing with this. Now that I'm back in lockdown, I'm going to have a lot more time at home and around the house to uh, experiment with stuff like this and work on some of those upcoming videos that I told you guys about. So I think that's pretty much it that I had to share today, guys. Let me know anything else that you think uh, would be good on the channel. Any other suggestions, any criticisms or thoughts that you have, uh, what you've been up to. And uh, looks like we just lost video footage for a second there. But I think it's coming back in a moment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you can probably still hear me. But I believe the, the video dropped out a little bit. All right. So I'm back. Uh, but yeah, I was going to end the video soon there anyway. Um, I don't know what happened there. I think it was my HDMI connection. But I just turned the camera off and on again. And I'm back. So just checking some last comments. I always wanted one of those for street photos. Can be a very stealthy cam since you're not looking at the subject. That would be cool. So anyone who's a fan of Vivian Maya type street photography, for example, knows that she was the master of shooting on the street with that TLR, which mind you, even though you have the stealth advantage, it wouldn't be easy. Like it, for me, 
I've tried playing with TLRs before and it's a lot slower to compose and get everything straight and to meter and to take the shot compared to something like a 35 mil camera. So um, I imagine that you are, that would be amazing. It'd be really cool to get good at shooting with one of these on the street or not necessarily get good, but to, to be effective with one of those on the street and to enjoy it and not just struggle with the, you know, reversed perspective. But yeah, I'll try that eventually. If the camera works well and I uh, enjoy using it, I will try and use it in uh, situations like street photography. That'll be pretty fun. Just making sure I haven't missed anything. All right, guys, uh, that was pretty much it. So look forward to some of that content on the channel. I've got the X-Pro3 film shooter's perspective that I'm working on. I've now got Acros 2 to chuck into that, maybe to even do a separate video on down the track. I've got more products coming from Essential Film Holder. I've got that print share coming up, which I'll uh, integrate into a new video. And uh, the Lomography instant square glass camera. So I'm looking forward to that too. Some instant photography. I haven't done it in a while. I have some Instax square film to use. And because it's square, maybe I could integrate it into, into this. Do a comparison of the film square shots and the Instax square shots. That'll be fun. Um, all right. I think that's it. Raymond, hello from Bulgaria, thanks. Hello from Australia, thanks for joining. Inkfast, also fact that flat face without a lens protruding. Yeah, <laughs> love waist level finders. Can we post our IGs? Yeah, feel free to do it. I'm about to end the stream. You can do it in the comments or better yet, join the Pushing Film Discord server. I put a link to that in the description of the video. That's where I'll be organizing any future, you know, meetups when lockdown opens up and where I also have been uh, reviewing users photography in my contact sheets live streams. If you haven't seen one of those, check out the last live stream on the channel. And there is also a self-promotion channel where you can share your Instagram. Uh, you can dump some photos, get some feedback on your photos, which is even better. So check out the link to the Discord server in the description of this video. Thanks for joining me today. And... Uh, Inkfast, have a good day or night is saying, and it is daytime here. So um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day if you're here in Australia or your night if you're on the other side of the world. And I'll see you in the next Pushing Film video or live stream. Thanks, guys.